birthday crafters welcome back to my channel <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining this is our third live event on the youtube channel so i am super excited to be here today <laughs> all righty before we get it started we had a little issues earlier but i want to do a quick technology check so if you can see me and hear me please let me know in the chat so that i know that we are okay and let me know where you're from okay let's see okay i think we are okay i see a couple of people here so we've got people from virginia nana 33 31331 from georgia robin from maryland boricua sewing and crafts of course from virginia awesome this is great thank you guys so much for joining i hope you guys enjoyed the trivia questions let me know if you did um, I thought that would be just a fun way for you guys to kind of get started and interact with each other. Okay, let's see. Alrighty, so I am joining you from sunny South Florida and it's a great day to be indoors and craft today. So it is super hot outside. So I'm glad to be inside and just being among friends and talking about crafts and things that we just truly love to do. So let me just say hello to a couple of people. I think we got a few more people in the chat. Robin, Nana, Shirley from Brooklyn. Wow, hello, thank you for joining. Annette from Connecticut, thank you guys. I am really excited and thank you for really showing uh, taking the time to show up here and you know just give me some support i really appreciate it we've got uh i don't know if i'm going to say her name right me harla from michigan uh, leslie from texas barbara from ohio wow thank you guys i truly truly appreciate this this is so much fun Eve Mar from Fort Myers. Awesome. You're not too far away. Thanks for joining. Okay, let me just check a couple of my notes to make sure I got everything on here. So last week, if you joined us on the live, we had some discussions on Dollar Tree items that you can purchase. And one of the things that we found were faux leather leaves. And as we were talking about the faux leather leaves, someone in the chat indicated that, you know, it may be a good idea to embroider on them. So I did, and I just wanna share with you some of the uh, things that I ended up with, some failures, um, what worked, what didn't work. So I just wanted to kind of give that over to you. So let me show you the first one so this is the faux leather leaf and if you notice what i did in the back was kind of remove the plastic stem that is on here so what i did was kind of peel i didn't take the whole thing off because i just wanted to try to embroider just a small piece but i took some of it off here and i didn't want it to you know try to embroider on top of this plastic piece and I used sticky stabilizer to just kind of put the leaf on here. And I wasn't that pleased on how it came out. I'm not sure how, how well you guys are gonna see this, but you could see some of the bobbin thread. Like it, it just, it, it wasn't that great, but it did work. So I thought, you know, let me just switch things around and see what I can do to make it come out a little bit better. And so I tried it again. And this time I used tearaway stabilizer. And I saw it did come out a little bit better, but it still wasn't the best thing. I did the same thing on the back. I took out the plastic and took it out of the way and I didn't remove the whole thing. And you can see that it's it did come out okay, it stitched, but it just didn't look right enough for me just yet. So I thought, let me just try something a little bit different. So what I did on the third try is I decided to remove 
the plastic piece all together completely. And I can tell you that, you know, it wasn't that hard to do. I was kind of afraid that I would tear the leaf, but it, that didn't happen. So, you know, I did it very slowly, just pulling it out a piece at a time. I did the thinner pieces first, and then I pulled the longer piece on the bottom last because I think that was the most dense. So I was afraid that would be one to rip it. So I figured if I had enough of the small plastic pieces to take out that, you know, it would give me a little bit more leadway, which it did. But then I was able to kind of lay it flat and I just um, used the basting spray to hold it down. And then with the cutaway stabilizer, I was able to, to embroider it and what I did was use a larger font. So let me know what you guys think. I think it turned out pretty well. I'm gonna just head over to the chat and see what you guys think on here. Let's see, Nana331, very pretty. Variqua says, looks like your tension was off on the meat machine. Yeah, I thought so too, but then I just tried it again, just changing the font size and it ended up with this finish and i thought actually that that looked much nicer being a larger font so yeah if you're gonna do these with a smaller font like i did the first and second time i think you do have to adjust the tension but doing it on the larger font i did not adjust the attention and i think it came out pretty good i don't see the bobbin anywhere and and, and now i'm kind of able to just see all of the names you know clearly because if it's this small you really couldn't see it very well so i thought this one was a little bit better so now that i know that i was able to do these now remember you can get these at the dollar store and they came in a packet of eight so i actually thought they were neat so i want to just give you a quick idea on what you can do so what i did was i took a napkin and i just put a little napkin ring that i even got at the dollar store as well and what i did then is i bought this little pick that you can get where in the little floral section this was also at the dollar store and this is something you can kind of just put you know kind of snip it here on the bottom and you'll have you know the little picks and you don't have to put the entire pick you can just take pieces of it and just put it on here and then if you remember in the live we had two different types of leaves you had the maple leaf and then you had these other leaves that came in a different packet so I thought that what I could do was just mix the two. I didn't want to embroider on these. So what I did was just kind of stick these in here. And what you can do is just kind of either put it behind your little floral decor, or you can put it in front, kind of depends on your preference. And then here's the leaf that I embroidered, and then you can kind of just put it on top, glue it on to the napkin ring, and you got yourself a cute little table setting that you could use for the upcoming Thanksgiving break. So this is one of the options that you have. The other thing is you can um, take, I didn't, I didn't glue it back, but you can take the plastic piece and then just glue it right back to the back of the leaf, right like that. And then when you turn it around, you know, it'll just be exactly like it was before with the leaf. And you can use this, you know, on any type of decor. So if you're looking to have a table setting and you want to have the place cards with everyone's names on them, you can use this and then just take, you know, a cardboard piece of card and, and just decorate that and just have it as a place setting. Or like I did here, you can just, you know, attach it to the napkin holder or just put it on the plate as part of their place setting. So this is just a quick fun idea that you could do for Thanksgiving. So I just wanted to bring that back up because, you know, we talked about this last week and I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly who it was that suggested it, but you know, 
it can be done and thanks for the suggestion and here it is you know so i think that you guys would really like it now so let's see um there's a lot of people chatting on here great idea i love that thanks leslie yeah great idea for thanksgiving and christmas right barbara this is you know all you have to do is change up the decor, you know, and you can use these for pretty much anything. And there's so many projects that people are gonna start doing now for the fall, especially. And these are just, a, you know, a really easy way to decorate. And the fact that you can embroider on it, hey, that's that's a blank. So th this is uh, probably gonna be a hot item from the Dollar Tree that they're doing this year. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be using these for the upcoming decorations that they do for the holidays. So let's see. That's really cute. Thanks, Mariqua. Love the idea. Thanks, Robin. Leslie, thank you guys so much. I, I think it's a cute one. So let's put that off to the side because I want to get to some other things that we want to talk about. So let's see. If you if you follow my channel, you'll know that I had a giveaway not too long ago and the winner of the giveaway got a book and this was the Potholders All Seasons by Ann Quilter's book. It's something that I thought was a really fun book that had a lot of patterns on here that you can make. I mean, one of the things that I truly love and keep looking at and I just got to get myself to do it is this chicken pot holder. I mean, I, I just can't tell you how cute this is. I just love it. And I got to get myself some time to sit down and do it. I did got the fabric for it. I just haven't had time to sit down for it. But it's definitely one of the things that I want to be making. So these are quick little gifts that you can give out. And there have all kinds of seasons, things for Christmas, for the Thanksgiving holiday, for Halloween. There's so many fun things that you can make from this. And it really doesn't take a lot of fabric to be able to to be able to do that project so i had the giveaway and uh the person that won the giveaway has received the book and one of the things that i'm also doing for her and her name is regina rebooted um, i made a little kind of just a little zipper pouch for her so i did embroider her name on there Regina rebooted and had a little cowboy boot with the flowers and I thought that was just cute. These were actually some napkins that I purchased. This isn't fabric, this is actual napkins and I took the napkins and I made it into a zippered pouch. And what I did was just embroider one of the napkins and then I just, you know, put in the zipper and then sewed it all the way around, uh, quarter inch seam allowance. So, you know, Regina, if you're watching out there, you know, this is coming your way. I just wanted to add a little bit extra to the giveaway since you did win. And I was really happy that, you know, everyone's participated. So for those of you that are out there that didn't win, look out for my videos because I'm gonna be giving away more things. So you just may be the next winner. So I hope you guys really like it and join. Okay, next item that I have, let's see, are what we are here to talk about today, are jelly rolls. And there's just so many different kinds that you can get. I can tell you that you can purchase these anywhere. I mean, I've seen them in Walmart. Joann's, you can even get them from the dollar store. And if you're not familiar, these are some that are actually from the dollar store. So they are just two and a half inch by 42 inches. And they come 14 pieces, which are seven designs, two strips of each design. And these are just some really inexpensive things that you can pick up to make all kinds of projects with. So these are just some of the ones that I got. Um, you can see the different colors that they have. You know, they're just really fun projects that you can do. So what I'm gonna do is just show you a couple here. So like this is one packet and you can see here, 
I can get this long thing going. This is 42 inches long, so it is pretty long. And if I open it up, I probably wouldn't be able to show you the whole thing, but I have it folded here. You can see how long that is. It is only two and a half inches wide, but that kind of gives you a lot of the creativity to do what you want with this. And I can tell you that I've made things like zipper pouches, bags, you know, there's just so many things that you can do with this that I really enjoy it. And it kind of gives you the freedom to kind of create your own fabric. So when you have that fabric that you buy off the bolt, it's just one big drape. But because you have strips, it allows you to kind of create your own fabrics. So you can put it and sew it together any way you'd like. And let me just kind of give you a quick, a quick little um, demo of what I mean. And I'll try to keep these closed because they're just too long. So here's one, this one packet. Remember it's two colors for each. And you can see here, if I put all of these together, and what you do is then you would just sew it. Quarter inch seam allowance would be fine. You can even do an eighth or a scant quarter inch. And then once you start putting these together and you can just kind of create a pattern or you don't have to have it as a pattern. You can have it any way you want. It just kind of gives you the freedom to put it all in different ways. And once you have this together, you know, once you've sewn it, it all becomes one pattern, one fabric, one piece that you can use for any project that you have. And I've seen people that kind of even cut it different ways. So you could even have this as just little triangle pieces, or once they put this together, they'll then use this as part of their applique. And that would look really nice on shirts. So that's something that you can do to just get this kind of crazy color type pattern and just something a little bit different that not many people have. And you don't necessarily have to use the ones that come in the packet. You can also mix and match with other fabrics that you have and just cut them out as the strips, the two and, a, two and a half inch strips that you need the length to be. So just an idea out there that you can do for some of these things. I'm gonna show you one that I started and this is on actually this packet right here that again, I got from the dollar store. So $1.25, 14 pieces, 17 designs, two strips of each one. Not a bad deal. They do have bigger jelly rolls that they sell at Joann's and Hobby Lobby. So I'm sure that, you know, you can find some of those things. So this is one pattern that I use with that packet. I'm gonna take a quick sip of water for a second. So as you can see, this one has really bright, vibrant colors and I just like the way it got put together. It's not a complete bag yet, but all you can, what you can see here in the back is how all I did was put them together and just sew them. And then I made it look like a bag because what I did once I put all my strips together, I added another strip on the top and then I did a piece of fabric that I had that was just is about five inches. And then all I did was I did cut towards the bottom. I did cut, it's about, I think it was about two inches and about an inch and a half down and what this does is it creates the box for the bottom of the bag so if i were to stand this up let's see if i can show you this here if i were to stand this up and the bag was sitting down you would see how these two sides here it's kind of hard to show you but let me see if i can put my hands together here. So this would be the bottom of the bag and this would be the side. 
And so once I sew these two sides together, you'll have that box on the bottom and the bag will be sitting flat onto the surface. So it will give you that extra room. So if you're looking at it from the inside of the bag, you'll see that this will be flat these two be these two will be folded in and sewn and that would be the actual bag so this would be the bottom piece so it gives you quite a bit of room to be able to put things in the bag and i haven't done the handles yet um i haven't decided what i want the handles to look like uh, i'm just thinking of using this as one of my shopping bags or something that i can just kind of throw in the car and then I can just see, you know, anytime I need a bag or if we go to the beach or, you know, anything that we need something for, then I'll go ahead and I'll leave it in the car and I have a little bag that, you know, it's not plastic and it's a little bit sturdy and you can kind of put things in. So this is just one idea of something that's kind of my little work in progress right now. <laughs> So let's see if you guys have any questions on that. Please let me know in the chat. Let's see. Oh, Boricua, sorry, I love those colors. Yes, right? I, I thought they were really cute colors. It really popped. So, I mean, there are so many different options out there that you can do. Let's see, Nana says, well, we'll be going to the Dollar Tree for sure. Definitely, I mean, they do have a lot of things that are out there that will save you a lot of money on crafting supplies because they have things from Cricut, vinyl, fabric. I mean, it's I've really been impressed with what they brought into the store recently, especially in the past year or so. They've really stepped it up. So, you know, always go there first. I like to do my little, my little run when I go out on my errands and I'll go to the Dollar Tree first, see what they have. And then from the Dollar Tree, I'll go to Hobby Lobby, Joann's and all those other places. But I do like to stop there first because it, one, it just gives me inspiration for just different types of projects from just the things that I see as I walk around the store. And then the other thing is they have these really neat, you know, crafting things out there and they're pretty inexpensive and you really don't have to spend all that much money. You know, a fabric is, you know, they have nice fabrics and they have nice patterns in Hobby Lobby and stuff, but I kind of like to be able to create my own. So this is just something that I threw together and I think, you know, it's just something cute. Okay, so let's see. Oh, so Taisha says, I love purchasing Jelly Rose charms, packs, and layer cakes. I don't have to worry about matching fabric. Exactly, you know, it, they coordinate just within the pack. So, you know, it kind of takes out that time that you take just trying to figure out, oh, what should I match this one with? This kind of all matches together and it really does help a lot. And it's just, you can make it your own. Like you don't have to use what they put into the pack. You can coordinate different charm packs that you had, or you can just add some of the fabric that you have in your stash. So it just really helps out. And I think it's a quick and easy way to get things done. Alrighty. Oh, one minute tips. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm, I'm late. Well, thanks for joining. Alrighty. Annette says, great idea. Barbara says, not having much luck in finding items like these at my Dollar Tree. We'll have to keep looking. Well, Barbara, you know, you can also order it online. If you go to dollartree.com, you can do orders online. Sometimes you have to buy more than just one. Like, I, I don't think you can order just one pack, you know, at $1.25. I think they make you order at least like five, but you know, they're pretty low quantity. So if you can't find it locally, check them out online because they do have some of that stuff. And I do know that some crafters, what they do when they see hot items like the leaf, right? They might go online and buy like a whole box of them because they know that they're gonna use them for the upcoming crafts. So then you'll just get a whole box of these because you might just go to the Dollar Tree and people go through these really fast. So if you don't get there right when they come out, sometimes they, th those stores get picked over really fast. So you definitely want to check this out. So try, try doing it online if you can't find it in your local Dollar Tree store. 
Okay, excellent. Oh, Nana says, excellent place to get blanks to practice and play with. It, exactly. You know, they have things from fabric. They also have felt, which I know a lot of people use felt to be able to, you know, test their designs on the embroidery machine. So this is definitely inexpensive way to just get little things. And they have some really cute decorations. There's things that, you know, I, I use them all the time. It's, it's really, really great. Um, thank you for the info, Nancy. Thanks, Barbara. Leslie says, when I looked online, most of the items was a box of like 36. Yeah, it's it really depends. And sometimes it, <clears throat> it depends on how hot the item is. I think if, if they notice a lot of people are buying them, they make the quantity higher because I know for these, um, I went in one day, picked up a couple, I went back a couple days later and they were gone. I mean, they go really fast. When people go there and they find these types of things, they go pretty fast. So if you see anything out there, don't hesitate on getting it. It's $1.25, so it shouldn't be too bad, but you know, you're not guaranteed that they're gonna have it again when you go back the next day. That's the only drawback about that store, but you know, for the price, you really can't beat it. So let me just show you another one that I did. And this one I did also with Dollar Tree. And this, in this bag, I have not finished it yet, but I added some batting because I wanted to make this a little bit of a bigger bag. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I go to Aldi's sometimes. And in Aldi's, you know, they don't give you the bags. They tell you that you, you know, you have to bring your own bags or you can buy the bags that are in the store. So what I like to do is just kind of keep bags in my car. And so when I go there, you know, sometimes the bags that I have, either it's not enough or they're too small or, you know, or they're not strong enough to carry. And then I have to kind of keep going back and forth inside my house, bringing the stuff inside. So I decided to just make my own. And this one's a pretty large bag. And I did put in the handles. I haven't really sewn anything yet. Everything's kind of just pinned together, but you can see the strips right here. And all I did again was quarter inch seam allowance, bringing all of the strips together. And then I threw a strip on the top to make that bag. Now I did do the cut on the bottom, as you can see, and I believe it was about two inches and one and a half, or two inches this way and one and a half this way. And that gives me the box in the bottom and I'll be sewing this together. And with that, I did do cotton batting in the middle. And then I have another piece of fabric and this one is just fabric that I had laying around. So this is just one piece of fabric here that I had of a yard of this pink. So I decided to use this as my inner fabric. Now, I ran into a little problem here. It was one yard of fabric that I had, but when I cut it out, I cut it out short. So I ended up having a big piece right here that didn't have the inner fabric. So what I ended up doing is I, I used another piece that I had of the same fabric and I just kind of sewed it in here to add on to the piece that I was missing. So this is that line here that you're seeing is just me sewing the two pieces together to make it one continuous fabric. And since this is the inside of the bag, you know, I really didn't mind doing that. So, you know, no one's really gonna see it, but me and the bag is for me, so I really didn't mind. But this is something I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing together and then for the handle, what I did was I took a, another strip from the same charm pack and I just folded it. I ironed it in half this way. And then I folded the edges to the inside of the fold, which then creates that handle. And so what I'm going to do is sew that down here 
in the middle. And then what that ends up doing is it takes away the raw edges from showing. So I still haven't decided I might add a little bit of batting onto the handle because I think that that's going to make it a little bit more sturdier. And when I do sew the handles together, I'll probably backstitch a couple of times on here just to reinforce it to make sure that this stays pretty strong. So that's the bag that I made or one that's in progress, I should say. And it was again using the jelly rolls. So as you can see, there's plenty of projects that you can do out there with this bag. So it, you know, it, it turns out really cute. It's something I can use. It's functional, which is what I love. You know, so th these jelly rolls, I mean, they call them strips at the dollar store, but it's jelly rolls. I mean, they go a long way. They really do. And you can really start to do all kinds of projects with these and get really creative. And if you're new to sewing and you're just starting out, this is a perfect way to not, you know, break the bank getting tons of fabric. This is a nice way to just help you coordinate fabrics together and put little projects in. So let me just pause right here, see what we have out here. Uh, Bariqua says the colors are really nice. One Minute Tip says I love it. Let's see, do the square stitch on the handles. Yeah, that's another way that you can do the handles with a square stitch and that reinforces it. And if um, you were on last night uh, with Bariqua Sewing and Crafts, I did, um, I was on her channel and this was one of the things, the projects that she was showing, she got a gift from someone and when they, stitched the handle onto a bag that they gave her they did a square stitch which is basically just two bo a box within a box and that's what you're stitching on here and that just reinforces something you want to make sure you use a construction stitch i wouldn't do a stitch length longer than two and a half inches i think that's the appropriate uh, length that you would want when you're doing these types of uh, bags that need some kind of reinforcement. So you definitely want to use a construction stitch with that. Okay, let's see. So Barbara says, is the bag pattern your idea or is there a pattern out there? You know, Barbara, I'm sure that there's a lot of different patterns out there. I've seen so many different ones. I just kind of threw this one together and I put the um, strips together and then threw one on the side, but I had seen one before. Um, I wanna say that it was in Hobby Lobby and in Hobby Lobby, I think they had some patterns that maybe would like come with batting and stuff. And you can get some ideas from that. Long, long time ago, I can tell you, I, I did do one of those. Um, but I don't think it was with jelly rolls. I think it, they were actual charm packs. So they were like the bigger squares, but I'm sure that they have them out there. So you could probably get a kit that'll help you put it all together. So let me know if you want me to do a tutorial that will show you how to make a bag. You know, I can try to put something like that together, but this is just something, you know, just take it out of the pack make your own design, throw it together. You know, there's not really much to the bag that you need to do. The only thing you really need to uh, remember is the bottom piece that you do have to cut it out a certain way so that you get that box on the bottom and then the handles and reinforcing them. And everything else is really just a very simple quarter inch seam allowance stitch all the way around. It's really not a difficult project. This is certainly something that you can do for beginners as well. But I'm sure there are out there, so you can probably take a look, check online. I'm sure there's all kinds of kits that are out there as well. Okay, let's see. Leslie said, I'd be surprised if we can't get one online somewhere. I'm sure you can. You know, I'm, I'm definitely sure that you can, Leslie. Uh, Barico said, yes, do the tutorial. That would be great. Okay, so I'll, I'll try to put something together and I'll get a tutorial out there for you. That's something that, um, you know, I can work on. Okay, Trisha says, when making a bag, just decide how long and wide you want the bag. Decide if you want a boxed bottom and the width. 
you you want to make it the length of your handles. It's not hard to figure out. Exactly. So Taisha, thanks. Thanks for that comment. That's so true. I mean, bags, you know, people think they are difficult. They're really not that difficult. Um, once you break it down and once you do a couple of them, you, you, you see them and they're pretty simple. You just really have to decide on the bottom, decide how big you want it. You know, this bag is a lot longer than the first bag. The first bag that I showed you was a little bit wider. And if I line them up side by side, you can see the difference. You see how this bag is so much shorter, but it is wider. Where the second bag, I wanted to make it longer and deeper to kind of hold more groceries. And I didn't make it as wide. So it, it could be however you want it to be. You know, it's, 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 this is all you, it's all your choice. You know, there's no rules to it. You can make it any way you want. You know, one thing you can do is also after you've sewn, all your jelly rolls together, you can cut them in like a zigzag style and then reattach them as a zigzag. So now you have this zigzaggy type of design with all the different colors in it. So that's something that, you know, there's just ideas. There's so many things that you can do. I mean, my head just kind of goes and goes with all different things that you can come up with on these. But these are just some, you know, fun little projects that you know, I like to do and they're relatively inexpensive because you can get these items, like I said, at your local Dollar Tree. Okay, so let me just pause right there. Nana says a tutorial would be great for a beginner. Absolutely, I'll try to get that out to you guys. So let me see uh, what else did I have for you guys. Oh, so I do have one thing I want to share with you guys and this is, it's not a crafting thing, but if you follow my Facebook group, you'll see some of the things that I do that are not crafting related, but they're just fun things that I like to do. So I do like to garden a lot and I have a little garden in my yard, but they're all in potted plants. So every once in a while, I get really excited because I get something fun that comes up. So let me just get that for you. Now, it's probably gonna make a little mess on my table, but <laughs> this <laughs> is what I got. <laughs> so this is my little pineapple that I was able to grow. And it's a small pineapple. It's, you know, it's so funny because the plants kind of hide the pineapple and it's almost like they kind of protect themselves. So. Well, I had this out in my backyard and I noticed that as the pineapple started to become really ripe, the leaves or, or I don't know what you call these, I guess leaves or stalks, I'm not sure what they are called, but I noticed they started to get closer to it, almost like hiding themselves, hiding the pineapple from the predators or like the birds and, you know, and things that'll come and eat the pineapple. So I noticed that it started to kind of just, you know, close up. So I thought that was cool, but I wanted to kind of show this because this is my new little baby here. <laughs> you know, I got this little pineapple. I grew it from scratch. Now, this is actually my, I think it's my third pineapple that I grew. Um, a friend of mine a long time ago gave me a pineapple, threw it in a pot, didn't think of anything of it. I didn't think it was gonna grow and it did. And then since then I put the top of the pineapple after we've taken it off what i did was replant it and i put it in a much bigger pot and i got a huge pineapple out of it so i thought that was really neat now there is um a youtube channel her name is the lazy hoa the lazy gardener hoa and she does a lot of gardening i do watch her channel and she's got some pretty neat tips as well and it's funny because i kind of thought of her as we were doing you know some more gardening so i just wanted to share this with you just a fun little thing that i do off to the side it's just something that i like to you know do besides you know sewing and crafting and I can tell you that I'm going to be taking this pineapple out sometime today. <laughs> so we'll be having, uh, I don't know, pina coladas or something with it. So who knows? 
<laughs> Let me know what you think in the chat. <laughs> All righty, Borica says, Nancy, gonna be mad because when I visit, I'm gonna eat her pineapples. Oh, no, you're not. I'm gonna have plenty of them by the time you get here. Robin is laughing. Trisha says, how long have you been growing this pineapple? I can tell you, these pineapples don't grow overnight. It did take some time. Um, I wanna say that the first one, I didn't see anything for almost, a year and a half going on two years i mean it was a really long time and then finally we got the first pineapple and then since then every time i harvest a pineapple like i'll be harvesting this one today what i'll do is i'll remove this top portion i'm just going to twist it off and i'll put this in some water wait a couple of days for it to have some roots and then i'll put it and pot it in the plant and maybe within a year or so i'll get the pineapple but it's just low maintenance, you know, you just put it out there, just make sure it gets some water. I have it sitting out in the sun and you know, I'm in South Florida, so it's pretty hot out here. And you know, it really didn't have to do very much and it kind of just grew on its own. So I do trim these a little bit because they do get pretty big, but they look really pretty in the backyard and so, you know, I thought I'd just share that fun thing, just something that I like to do. <laughs> All righty, so let's see any other questions out there. Let's see. Barbara Jeanette, you were just invited. That's right. Well, you know, she's invited all the time. <laughs> Annette says, yummy. Nana says, I've grown a pineapple plant, which was beautiful, but I didn't think it would actually have fruit. I didn't either, and it just surprised me. And again, you know, this is not our first one, but we had one that was much bigger than this and really i i was really surprised i didn't think that this thing was actually gonna grow but it did so i actually had a lot of fun with it <laughs> nana says now i've got to get a pineapple too <laughs> go ahead yeah why not i mean it's really low maintenance you don't have to do much with it and it'll grow on its own okay let's see and Mariqua says she has a farm in her backyard. I wouldn't say a farm, but I have a lot. Um, I do have pineapples. I do have a, a mango tree. It's, it's a dwarf mango tree that we have in a potted plant. And it's been growing. It's been about a year now that I've had it. Uh, it did flower last year. Well, it flowered, I guess in the beginning of this year, maybe end of last year. And we did cut the flowers off, but the flowers are a good indication that it is going to give you mangoes, which was great. Now, what happened was we cut the flowers because they said that since the plant is still too young, if you let the flowers grow, it will give you mangoes, but then you won't get mangoes many years after because the plant is still trying to grow you want to be able to just cut the flowers off to give the, the plant an actual chance for it to strengthen and get a little stronger and then the following year it should give you mangoes so this year I should be getting some mangoes and I'm hoping that it happens soon. But right now it's just sitting out there. It is getting bigger and stronger. So I'm pretty happy about it. Now it is a dwarf, so it's not gonna get extremely tall, but I'm hoping that, you know, it gets strong enough to be able to give me some mangoes. <laughs> Alrighty, Judy says, I'm going to have to go visit Nancy and see her farm. We can talk pineapples. Well, Judy, you're welcome anytime. <laughs> That's great. Let's see. Da Barbara says, doubt in Ohio winter it would grow. Yeah, I, I that I don't, I'm not sure about. I'm not the expert on the gardening. I just dabble in it here and there, but I just have a lot of fun doing it. Let's see, Bariqua says, those mangoes there are so good. Yes, they are. And Nana says, Nancy Jeanette says, I can come shopping at your house. Hey, you're welcome anytime. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Evelyn says, my banana tree frost in December cold. 
Oh, a banana tree. I'd love to have one of those too. They have a lot of them down here in South Florida. You do see them out in the farm areas. And you know, sometimes you go by those farm areas and you see a lot of those fruit trees and you see the fruits on the floor. I mean, there's just an overabundance of it. It's just so tempting to get out and, you know, kind of grab a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy doing it. It's just another way for me to kind of pass the time. And, you know, I like to create things and this is just another way of creating something, not necessarily sewing, quilting, embroidering, but it is something that, you know, you can create. So I have a lot of fun with it. Alrighty. So I think that is everything that I had to share with you guys. Uh, if you like the content or if you'd like, you can join our Facebook group. It is giftshq.usa. Um, I do post all kinds of things out there and anytime I find any deals or anything, I'll try to put it out there as well. And uh, let's see if you like the channel, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. We're trying to reach our goal. So I really appreciate everyone for taking the time and joining us today. And I hope to be crafting with you all soon. Bye.